as you're all aware, last conference we took a, a pledge for um, works to the balcony, namely new seating. Um, and so, sort of February, March time, uh, I got involved in the, the process. Um, Pastor Chris had done a good job to bring it to a certain point, but we just, I think we'd come to the realization that it was a bit more than just changing chairs. Uh, there was fundamental flaws with what we had uh, originally in terms of the width between the seats and your knees. And so we got two companies that I'd worked with in the past on various projects. Um, one of them, the architect, was a company called Foster Wilson Size, um, and the structure engineer, a company called Goody Self Partnership. Uh, obviously, because we were increasing everything, there was a danger that we would lose a substantial number of seats, but we wanted to come up with a design solution that retained as many seats as possible, but made the whole experience better. Um, and so we started the initial works around the end of May, which was with the help of the church. We did the, the strip out and got it ready and quickly moved on to scaffold. And then the scaffold gave us access to the ceiling. So a, a big part of this project was, and it's probably stuff that you won't be able to visually see, but was doing a lot of repair work to the existing ceiling. So it's a traditional uh, wadded ceiling, so it's fibre plaster wadded ceiling, so it's fixed to the structure uh, via Hessian and various other things. Um, but it had been water damaged over the years, and so a lot of the decorative features and just the ceiling itself needed uh, sections removed, replaced, and so we had a, a specialist fibre plaster company called Artisan get on board and do that element of works. Um, and as you can see from the pictures, there was large elements of the ceiling that were having to be removed, formed off site and then reinstated. All the decoration was benchmarked. We went out to a specialist conservation decorator to do it. Um, although it sounds expensive, it actually proved to be, be more economical than just going to a normal painter. Um, I think if, a number of reasons for that is because they're used to doing this sort of stuff, they understand the the, the time and the methodology on it. They've also, they also had the level of finish that we needed to actually achieve the finished product. And we needed that level of quality to be high because we were using what, seven or eight different types of paint, seven different types of paint and metallic paint. And you can visually see it because you're quite close to the ceiling. You needed the depth of paint to be done correctly. We needed someone who um, has done this before, and it ended up being that they were they were um, the most economic and worked within our team, time frame, so that worked well. Uh, so once they had finished doing the ceiling and the walls, we struck the scaffold, and then it was over to Marco and his team to do the over tiering, which was a massive undertaking in itself. Uh, just to f throw a few figures out there, you're talking about almost 150 man days on Marco's team alone. Um, 200 odd sections of plywood, thousands of um, planks of wood for the softwood frame, uh, 200 steel angles for the balustrade supports, because the ba balustrade supports are all designed by the structure engineer to uh, withstand the, the sort of impacts that you'd expect on a balcony. And so that was a, a big undertaking, you know, six weeks worth of work from Marco and his team. Although it was very difficult, they managed to get the finished product bang on. It was important because we had to place the order for the seats early on, that all the measurements were exact, otherwise the seats wouldn't have fit in. So we managed to get all of that done. Um, and so when the, the carpet arrived and then the seats arrived, which were the last two things. Um, it was all, it was all bang on as it should be and as to the, the architect's drawings and as to the structure engineer design. So one of the, the main difficulties is we had to place the order for the seats 
all the way back in May to book our manufacturing slot and to get all the materials in place, etc. So the seats were set into the architectural design and there was minimal tolerances. You know, and the narrowest um, aisle we had, I think about 10 millimetres worth of tolerance. Otherwise, the seat would have clashed with the stairways. So they wouldn't have fit into place. Which created a challenge. Multiple things didn't help because it's a almost a hundred year old building. Uh, the building isn't actually straight, it's not square. Uh, it's longer, shorter, uneven, undulating, etc. Uh, and so there was a lot of a lot of detailing that had to be worked through and a lot of thinking time to get steps in place, to get the plinths uh, in the right position, to get equal st steps all the way up, um, to get the actual width of the corridors required for fire regulations, step depths, plinth depths, a lot of um, planning a lot of thought and a lot of patience in construction to get the finished product to a place where when these seats arrived, which was literally the last thing that they fit in the space because, you know, that would have been catastrophic if we <laughs> bought 453 seats and only managed to fit in 400. <laughs> so that was, that was quite key. Um, and Marco and his team did extremely well to get that done. The original number of seats on the smaller plinths and the smaller seats was 473. Um, so we have lost some seats because we've obviously got a lot wider plinths now um, and a lot wider seats. So it was always expected that we would lose some. Uh, because of the design, we've only lost 20 seats, which I think is quite an achievement given we had a fixed size. Uh, we've also not uh, interfered with the structure in any way, so everything that we've done is on top of the existing concrete structure, which meant, you know, economically we weren't having to spend vast amounts on redoing the balcony, etc. We only realistically had 20 weeks to do the, the works in, um, and we, we finished within that 20 weeks. We actually finished a week earlier. Just to give a little bit of context on the project, there was, we calculated, excluding sort of design team time, there was about 320 man days on this project. 20 weeks sold work, you know, some days there was up to 15 guys on site doing various things. Um, everyone who worked on the project came in on time and pretty much finished on time from, you know, Scaffoldor to Artisan, who did a, a brilliant job. Uh, Bradley Heritage, who were the, the conservation uh, decorators, they were excellent throughout. Andrew Bradley was very helpful. Um, Marco and his team smashed it. Rob, uh, Jason, Cyprian, Christian, uh, even Daniel, if I must mention Daniel. <coughs> he did something. Uh, yeah, so they did a they did a brilliant job, and forgive me if I've missed anyone. Stefan Bing helped out a lot, and then uh, Rosemount for getting the carpet done when they said they would, um, and uh, the seat installers slash manufacturers auditorium Mark from there. Um, big thank you to Hannah, who was the architect, who dealt with my emails at all sorts of hours, <laughs> was very helpful throughout. And she was the one who actually visualized the color scheme and sort of brought it all together. And the one who had all the visual impact. Um, and her boss, Jonathan, uh, Phil from the structure engineer, Pastor Chris from opening up at six o'clock in the morning to let the painters in and staying here till six o'clock as I was working. Um, and anyone else who had a, an involvement in the project. It, it definitely was a, a massive team effort to pull this out in the time period um, and stick, stick close to programme and budget.